You may be familiar with the question, if a giraffe could wear a tie, where would it place it? Well, a similar question presents us when we ask, if a scorpion has an anus, where is it? Is it here? Or here? Or indeed somewhere else completely? But of course, we'll come to that anatomic feature last. Scorpions belong to a group of animals called arthropods. These are invertebrates that have an exoskeleton, a segmented body, and paired jointed legs, and includes a diverse range of animals from butterflies to crabs. In this slide, we can see some of those features. For example, if we zoom in on the skin here, we can see the intersection between two body segments. In orange is the hard exoskeleton, and we can see muscles inserting onto the exoskeleton in the same way that it would to bone in mammals. And then between the body segments, we have this more flexible cuticle, allowing movement. More specifically within the arthropods, scorpions are arachnids, the same class as spiders, which have eight legs. Scorpions don't need to eat a lot. They can gorge themselves at one meal and then survive for up to a year without food. This is lucky for their prey because being eaten by a scorpion is not a pleasant experience. In fact, looking at the front end of a scorpion has an impressive array of mincers, grabbers and pincers with which to begin the digestion process. Unlike vertebrates, who generally have to begin chewing their food in their mouths to kick off digestion, scorpions and many other arthropods perform extraoral digestion. Or rather, digestion of their food by ripping it up into small pieces or squirting enzymes onto it before sucking up the semi-liquid mess that remains. First of all, prey are captured by the pedipalps, or the big pincers at the front. This pincering may or may not be accompanied by a sting from the venomous tail to subdue the prey. The pincers draw the prey in towards an area called the pre-oral cavity, which is bordered at the sides by the base of the pincers, below by parts of the first pair of legs, and above by the calicerae. The calicerae are there to chew and macerate the prey. In this excellent video by YouTuber Ecogeology for Ants, you can see the calicerae at work. They look like crab's claws with pincers sporting serrated edges. They can move like little hands, tearing the prey up into smaller pieces. The pieces of prey are then passed back to the coxapophyses of the first pair of legs underneath the calicerae, which act like grinders to further mince up the food. The coxapophyses also have slits on them where the scorpion exudes enzymes which mix with the food pulp. As the enzymes digest the food, any nutritious liquid runs down the channel in the coxapophyses of the second legs towards the scorpion's small mouth. I can't find any images of a scorpion's actual mouth, as in where the liquid food goes in. And for your own sake, don't try googling scorpion mouth, because not everyone's going to be referring to a scorpion's mouth, but rather a scorpion in... Never mind, just avoid it. From the mouth, the semi-liquid food enters a muscular accordion-like pharynx, also known as the sucking organ. Here the food is compressed to remove any solid material which forms a pellet that can be spat out again, sometimes called a rejection pellet. And so only liquid enters the scorpion's digestive system itself. Most of these structures are missing off the slide we're looking at. There is a glandular structure here, which is in the scorpion's front body segment or prosoma. I think this is a coxal gland, which is part of the scorpion's excretory system rather than the digestive system. If we zoom out again and move to the front of the scorpion, we can see part of the pedipalp here. And also the coxpophyses of the first, second, third oop, and fourth leg. Perhaps this part here is one of the calicera. And we can see plenty of muscles, such as this structure here, heading towards this feature to supply movement. Ultimately, we can say that this is not a midline section, but probably taken from a line something like this. The intestine carries on down the body, or mesosoma, in a thin tube. We can see a small section of it here, highlighted in light blue. But most of the action doesn't happen here as it would in vertebrates. Instead, you'll notice that the mesosoma of the scorpion is filled with all of these glands. 
This is called the hepatopancreas and is the largest organ in the scorpion, even sending extensions down into the legs. The hepatopancreas is made up of two kinds of cells, digestive and absorptive cells. The name of the organ, hepatopancreas, comes from the concept that this is a dual-purpose organ which both digests as the pancreas does and stores as the liver does. The storage of nutrients is the key that allows scorpions to survive so long without feeding. In fact, the hepatopancreas does even more than that, playing a key role in water storage and production of hemocyanin, the oxygen transport molecule or equivalent to hemoglobin in vertebrates. Digestion in the scorpion is radically different to that of vertebrates. You'll be familiar with the concept that the digestive tract secretes enzymes that break down food molecules into their smallest components for absorption. While the scorpion digestive system is capable of this extracellular digestion, they're also able to transport large molecules across their cell membranes by a process called pinocytosis, where they're broken down in the cytoplasm. This is intracellular digestion. This process of intracellular digestion is associated with less structured digestive systems of more ancient organisms. If we look at the microscopic structure of the glands, we can see a central lumen surrounded by cells. Within some of these cells, there are large globules of fat, these red structures here. You can see some of these cells are absolutely packed with these red fat globules, such as this one. The hepatopancreas stores a lot of glycogen, and imagine that these large clear cells here are storing some of it. The lipid stores will likely be broken down as necessary, providing a long-term energy source. Sometimes you'll see some more crystalline looking contents. They're angular and less coloured. These might be guanine crystals, a waste product of protein metabolism, which can be then secreted into the lumen and excreted. Alternatively, the hepatopancreas also processes heavy metals such as copper and zinc, into crystals for excretion. There is only a small section of intestine on this slide. We can see here it has typical columnar type cells that we've seen in the digestive tract of other animals. It's likely that these are going to have a similar digestive and absorptive role as their counterparts in vertebrates. But even here we can see that some of the cells have taken up lipid globules into their cytoplasm. Now, unfortunately, this not being anywhere close to a midline section, there is no tail on this specimen. So we won't be able to actually see this scorpion's anus. You'll have to make do with pictures, schematics and your imagination. Surprisingly, the scorpion's digestive system travels all the way down its tail, with the anus exiting on the last segment just before the stinger. This is inconvenient for scorpions which auto-amputate their tail in response to a predator threat since they lose not only their tail, but also their anus, and their only means of defecating. Scorpions that have amputated their tail will eventually fill up with faeces and die, but perhaps this isn't as silly as it seems. The scorpion's reproductive tract and genital opening are located in the mesosoma rather than the tail. Since a scorpion doesn't need to eat very often and can breed even when starved, a tailless adult could survive for long enough without an anus to produce another clutch of offspring which would not have been possible had the scorpion not left its tail behind. So that's all we can find out about the scorpion's digestive tract. There's not a huge amount of research, but what is published reveals something so different from what we normally learn about invertebrates. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos about animal anatomy and histology. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.